Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist. I work in New York and one of my friends um, contacted me today and said, could you please, please, please do a video on left ventricular hypertrophy? Um, and I thought I'd do this. So um, let me, let's get started. Let me tell you a little bit about what left ventricular hypertrophy is. Um, so basically, I've got a model of the heart here, and I'm going to try and do it in very simplistic terms so that you understand, okay? The first thing is, what is left ventricular hypertrophy? This is your heart, all right? Your heart consists of four chambers. This chamber, which is the left ventricle, and basically what it does is the left ventricle pumps blood through the valve, the aortic valve, into the aorta, and that blood goes all around the body, okay? It goes to the kidneys, it goes to the brain, it goes to all the vital organs. So the left ventricle is pretty important because it is the main pumping chamber of the heart. It is the one that supplies the whole of the body with blood, which is enriched with oxygen. And to do so, the left ventricle has to pump, and the left ventricle then pumps through this, this uh, valve here, all right, the aortic valve. Now, this has a certain dimension, um, and usually it's no more than one centimeter thick, this muscle. But in some people, it can get thicker and it can be much thicker than this. Okay, it can be two centimeters or three centimeters. And when it gets more thick, it is con it, that condition is called left ventricular hypertrophy. The left ventricle is thicker, i.e. more muscular than you would expect. All right. So that's what we're talking about. That's what left ventricular hypertrophy refers to. Now, the easy way to try and understand left ventricular hypertrophy is, say you are the manager of a boxer, okay? And as a manager of your boxer, you know that your boxer needs to be very strong, but also needs to be very mobile. He needs to be um, nimble-footed to do well in the ring, okay? Um, now, there are you 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 want him to you want him to do uh, weightlifting to get stronger, but equally well you want him to be do sort of footwork and uh, mobility exercises and cardiovascular work to become nimble footed. And um, at some point you start noticing that your boxer is beginning to get more muscular. Okay, so someone, uh, and the analogy is obviously that a doctor will come to you say and say, oh, your heart muscle looks a bit thicker. You have left ventricular hypertrophy. That is the same as someone coming to you or you as the manager turning around saying, oh, my boxer is beginning to look a bit more muscular. So there's two things that are important here. The first is to try and work out um, why your boxer is becoming is beginning to look more muscular. And the second thing you want to try and work out is what effect will it have if you have a more muscular boxer? Is it always good to have a more muscular boxer for, for the job that that boxer has to do, which is to box? Um, and so let's start thinking about these two things because ultimately when you are told you have a thickened heart muscle, you want to try and work out A, why is it thick? And two, will the thickness impact on my future health? Will this thickness in some way affect my prognosis? So the first thing to say is, why is your boxer getting more muscular? The most obvious cause is that he's working harder. He's doing weights, all right? If he's doing weights and he's looking more muscular, that's the most obvious thing. So that is the same as the heart working harder against a higher pressure. The heart is lifting more weight. Now, how can the heart lift more weight? Well, if you have a higher pressure in this blood vessel here in the aorta, then the heart has to pump much harder to pump blood out, all right? And it can do this over 10, 15, 20 years. And because it's having to work much harder, it gets thickened. So the most likely reason for the majority of people to develop um, a thicker heart muscle or have a more muscular boxer is that the heart is working harder or the boxer is working harder. He's doing more than you expect him to. Um, and if you leave that for several years, then that can get worse and worse and worse. So blood pressure is by far the commonest cause of left ventricular hypertrophy. Um, the second thing then is also to say, well, okay, maybe, maybe um, there may be another reason that he's getting more muscular. If your valve here, the aortic valve is narrowed, okay, 
uh, then that causes the heart to work harder and harder, and that can cause the heart uh, um, to become more muscular. Um, what about if your boxer is taking something, something um, uh, that he shouldn't be taking? let's say steroids maybe that's why he's becoming more muscular the analogy there is that if you have certain conditions such as amyloid or Fabry's disease these conditions result in this in deposition of stuff within this muscle and that can make the muscle look um, um, thicker so that's another reason why people develop left ventricular hypertrophy similarly if um, you have kidney dysfunction then you absorb more, um, you absorb, you you don't get rid of um, things as easily if you've got kidney dysfunction you, and, and you have more salt uh, in your body and therefore you absorb more water, they, therefore you have more water in your body and the heart is having to work harder. So kidney dysfunction also causes high blood pressure, high blood pressure results in left ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, another thing, what about genetics? If your boxer is genetically gifted and is just becoming more muscular as he's getting older, then that's the same as something called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So some people have a genetic defect um, which they inherit and that can cause abnormal thickness of the heart wall muscle. All right. Um, so those are the things to think of when someone tells you that you may have left ventricular hypertrophy. You should always ask yourself, why is my heart getting thicker? Because you don't want it to get thicker, all right? Because when, you're, uh, when your heart is getting more muscular, it comes at a price. Now, let me tell you, if your boxer becomes more and more muscular, then it, it, he, that comes at a price. You know, he's going to be less nimble-footed, all right? And that's why bodybuilders don't make very good boxers because although they're really hypertrophied, they've got real lots of muscle mass, they can't move as quickly. They're not as flexible. And that is the big problem with left ventricular hypertrophy. The more muscular the heart gets, the stiffer it gets, the less compliant it gets. So, so you don't want left ventricular hypertrophy. And if you have left ventricular hypertrophy, you have to ask yourself, why did I get it? Because tackling the cause will help get rid of the left ventricular hypertrophy. So if you're found to have left ventricular hypertrophy, it's always a good idea first to ask someone to do a 24-hour blood pressure monitor on you. Make sure that your blood pressure isn't elevated because if it is, treating it will help get the left ventricular hypertrophy down, okay? Um, number two, um, uh, you want someone to do a heart scan to make sure your heart, uh, you know, that you don't have this um, this uh, um, narrowed aortic valve, because if it is narrowed, then treating that will help get rid of the left ventricular hypertrophy. Um, similarly, um, you want someone to make sure that your kidney function is normal, okay? And of course, it's also important to know your family history. And if there is no other condition found that for the left ventricular hypertrophy, uh, then you have to ask yourself, could it be this thing called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which, I've in, which people can inherit from, um, from um, family members? So you need to know if there's anyone else in the family who may have this condition. But it's always good if you're found to have left ventricular hypertrophy, to make sure you have an answer as to why the heart is becoming more muscular. Why is this boxer, why is your boxer becoming more muscular? Okay, now, um, why is that important? It's important because some of the conditions that cause left ventricular hypertrophy can be dangerous. If you have high blood pressure, high blood pressure is associated with strokes, high blood pressure can cause heart attacks. If you have aortic stenosis, then that can get worse and worse and actually can cause the heart, you know, it can cause you to black out, can cause the heart to weaken with time. If you have kidney dysfunction, then that could get worse. So if you have this thing called amyloid or Fabry's disease, then that can reflect another problem somewhere else and cause the heart to weaken. So the conditions that can cause left ventricular hypertrophy are dangerous in their own right. And therefore it's important that they're identified. So left ventricular hypertrophy can sometimes be a, a, a very helpful sign of something else going on in the body, which may in itself be dangerous. And therefore by identifying the left ventricular hypertrophy, by looking for the causes of the left ventricular hypertrophy, you may identify a condition that you can potentially treat and thereby um, uh, not be susceptible to the dangers of that condition, such as um, you know, uh, long-standing uncontrolled high blood pressure. Okay. So that's one of the things. And 
it is also true to say that if you have left ventricular hypertrophy, then generally people say that your prognosis is not as good as if you don't have uh, left ventricular hypertrophy in the long run, okay? And that is largely because of the conditions that have caused the left ventricular hypertrophy. Although the left ventricular hypertrophy itself can also play a role, and I'll explain why. Uh, but, you know, so if your left ventricular hypertrophy is caused by high blood pressure, then of course people who have high uncontrolled blood pressure don't do as well in the long run unless it's very well controlled as someone who has no high blood pressure. Um, so, you know, research papers come out and say left ventricular hypertrophy associated with a poor prognosis, but what they actually mean is high blood pressure, uncontrolled high blood pressure, which is also causing the left ventricular hypertrophy is, um, is associated with the poor prognosis. But there is the other aspect of it is that, well, if you have left ventricular hypertrophy, then can the left ventricular hypertrophy itself, by itself, not the condition that's causing it, but by itself cause you any harm? And the answer is yes, it can. And there are a variety of things that can do okay so i'm going to explain to you so the first thing to say is that if you have a very muscular boxer okay he's not going to be as nimble footed and therefore a hypertrophied heart okay a hypertrophied heart is generally a stiff heart it usually it contracts very well but it doesn't relax as easily okay so when the heart is therefore filling with blood you've only got a certain amount of time before the next heartbeat. And if the heart is stiff, it doesn't fill with as much blood as it should. Okay? So although it is very good at pumping blood out, it doesn't actually fill with much blood. And therefore, because it doesn't fill with much blood, it has less blood to pump out. And because it has less blood to pump out, therefore, what you will start getting is signs of a lack of blood to the vital organs, such as the kidneys the kidneys will not necessarily over a number of years get as much blood as they are used to because over a number of years the thicker heavier um, muscle of the heart is not relaxing as well it's not filling with as much blood it's therefore not pumping as much blood out it's pumping fine it's just if it's got less blood in it it's going to pump less blood out okay so the kidneys will then detect that and they get they go into um a different kind of mode when they detect that and they will start saying well oh maybe this person is dehydrated maybe that's why we're not getting as much blood as we should and they will therefore start absorbing more uh, fluid in your body they will um, uh, activate various hormones which work towards um, uh, tightening up your blood vessels so that um, more pressure is generated to perfuse the kidneys, okay? So it propagates itself after a little while. And that's um, bad because, um, you know, you get into this vicious cycle. Um, your, your kidneys are absorbing more. They're secreting more hormones. The hormones are, um, the, they're absorbing more water. That's overloading the heart. So you're giving the heart more and more work to do. Um, and you're making it stiffer and you're not allowing the heart to relax. So less relaxation, more volume, eventually what happens, eventually what will happen is after a certain point, you start overlading the heart so much that the heart actually starts weakening. Okay, so left ventricular hypertrophy, if left unchecked over a long period of time, will result in the heart actually paradoxically weakening. And the same thing can be said for your boxer. You know, he trains, he keeps training, he keeps training, he keeps training. Um, but if he's training too much, at some point, his muscles will paradoxically start weakening rather than strengthening up. The second problem is that um, the heart uh, muscle relies on blood, all right? So um, this heart muscle needs blood, which is supplied by these heart arteries, all right? And you only have a certain number of heart arteries. Of course, over a number of years, you will try and uh, develop small vessels to try and supply this extra muscle that you've built by working harder. But at some point, what will happen is that the muscle will grow so thick that it will start outstripping its blood supply. And if muscle doesn't get blood, then muscle starts dying. So what will happen is the muscle will get bigger, 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 and then it will start not, it will get so big that it's not getting enough oxygen. And that can therefore lead to the bits of the heart muscle then weakening because they're not getting enough blood. 
so the bits of heart muscle start dying and you start developing a weak heart. So that's the other problem with um, left ventricular hypertrophy. The third thing to say with left ventricular hypertrophy is that the heart muscle, um, uh, remember what's happening over here, okay? You have the atria here. This is where the blood comes in, into the ventricle. The ventricle then pumps the blood through the valve. Now, if the ventricle is stiff and it doesn't open very much, then uh, the pressure in this cavity is going to be high because there's still, you know, it, it's just not opened as well. So what happens is the blood, which would normally just come in, flow in, can't flow in as easily. And therefore, there's more reliance on the atria, the top chamber of the heart, to pump the blood in. Okay, usually what happens is the heart relaxes, blood just comes through the atrium uh, by a suction effect and fills the ventricle. And then the atrium contracts slightly towards the end to try and push a little bit more blood in. However, if blood isn't coming in by suction passively, because the pressure here is high, there's a greater reliance on the atrium to pump blood in. Normally, the atrium will only pump around about 10 or 15% of all the blood into the left ventricle. The rest, 85% of it, will come in passively. But in people who have severe left ventricular hypertrophy, what happens is only, say, 50% of the blood will come in passively, and the rest of it has to be pumped in by the atria. That means that the atria has to work harder and harder. And over a period of time, the atria, because it's a thin wall structure, will dilate. When it dilates, it becomes weak. When it becomes weak, it becomes flabby. And when it becomes flabby, it stops working. And that condition is called atrial fibrillation. So left ventricular hypertrophy exposes the atria to left atrial dilatation. And as the atria gets bigger, it becomes weaker. And eventually, you develop atrial fibrillation. And now the problem is, the atrial fibrillation is bad for people who have severe left ventricular hypertrophy for a lot of reasons. One is that suddenly, you know, you're used to having the atria pump 50% of the blood into this left ventricle, and the atria, if that stops working, then you're pumping so much less blood out because so much less blood is actually filling into the left ventricle. So people who have left severe left ventricular hypertrophy who develop atrial fibrillation don't like atrial fibrillation because it suddenly results in a lot less blood coming out of the heart. And that's why um, um, it's a problem. The second thing to say is, of course, until you develop atrial fibrillation, you can still get a lot of atrial ectopy, ectopics, and a lot of people with significant left ventricular hypertrophy will complain of ectopic beats for a few months, um, years, and then eventually go into atrial fibrillation. And the good news is, like with your boxer, if you tell him to keep off the weights, uh, then the left ventricular hypertrophy can regress. And therefore, it becomes really crucial that you identify what the cause of the left ventricular hypertrophy is and you get treated aggressively. And if you're treated aggressively, you take that extra pressure off the heart, the left ventricular hypertrophy will start regressing. Another group that develops left ventricular hypertrophy is athletes people who are working really hard, placing great demands on their body, they can develop something called an athletic heart, which is really um, uh, very dramatic. It just causes mild thickness of the left ventricle, but it can sometimes predispose people to developing ectopics, etc. And in that case, three or six months of detraining, stopping exercise, detraining or reducing, uh, going onto a formal detraining program, gradual reduction in exercise, will result in regression of the left ventricular hypertrophy. All right, so this was for Rosalind, my friend, um, and uh, I hope this answers some of your questions. Now, I just wanted you to see my website address. My website is yourcardiology.co.uk. I have a Facebook page, and this is me. So um, I'm really grateful to you all for uh, taking your time out and listening to my videos. If you found this useful, please consider subscribing. All the best. Take care.